Um, the temperature taking regulation, now we're doing it very slowly and it takes a while, but I'm in some in my groups I can do this under one minute. You know, I will tell the children three deep breaths or five, connect to your temperature, what's your feeling and need, and do this inside yourself. We're not gonna share today, we don't have time. So I can do it very quickly, or I can take time to do what we're doing now. So take your temperature and then put your feelings and needs. Who wants to share? Let's let the students uh, speak about their feelings and needs. So you, you can decide. It can be very quick or it could take longer. So this is really important that you figure out how you can do this. And you can't, because you're teaching by subject, you can't do that every time you go to class because the kids are going to get really bored. Like, oh, not again. And if they do it four, five, six times a day, that's not a good idea. In, uh, in Siddhartha school, what we, we did, and the teacher decided that whoever's teaching first class in the morning would do it, and first class in the afternoon, they kind of organized so the children would get at least once a day. And the t it's not always the same teachers that get the morning or afternoon, so we get different teachers doing this. Or you do it when you see your class come in and they're like in the volcano, the whole, <laughs> the whole class is like very explosive, or there's a lot of energy that would be a good moment to do it. So you have to think about how to do this and how to reinvest. And it's, it's a bit more challenging in your case because you teach by subject. So anyway, let's just do it for ourselves. So sit down with your two feet on the ground and back straight or resting on your back rest. And we're going to take three deep breaths and go see how we're feeling today. Go look inside ourselves. Here we go. Okay. Who's in the volcano this morning? Oh, am I alone? <laughs> Every morning. Okay, who's a little bit in the volcano, but in the still in the calmer zone? A little bit? Okay. And who's in the iceberg? Tired, sick, not going well this morning. Who's a little bit in the iceberg? A little bit tired, a little bit sick, or okay, a little bit sad. Okay, oh, a lot of, a little bit... A lot of little icebergs this morning. So that also indicates, it gives me an indication of what kind of mood I have in my class. Um, who's in the calm alert zone? Ready to learn, focused. Ha. So these two will help us because regulation is contagious. We spoke about it briefly, but a dysregulated brain dysregulates other brains. And it goes both way. We, we think as adults we can manage this all the time. Small kids can dysregulate us in two seconds. And I can dysregulate a small kid in two seconds or even one, like we saw in the video also yesterday. So the human brain is very sensitive to this. So this kind of reading of your class and your group, the kind of energy that goes on is also connected deeply to the type of learning that's gonna take place and you can address it and modify it by using these and the emotional literacy and the regulation. So I think it's time for our mindfulness practice. I really need it this morning. I keep waking up at two, it's really hard. Oh, we forgot the feelings and needs, sorry. So that's why, so just put down your feelings and needs, see how you're feeling and what you're needing. I'm going too fast. That's why I'm in the volcano. See, my brain's not thinking straight. The, those cards, there's only 20 feelings and needs, and I suggest now that you know, you got the hang of it, use the, the, the paper ones, the, the printed ones, 
because they're much more extensive. Uh, I'll show you which ones I mean. So, of course, you can always put the feelings or the need card with a question mark because the feeling or the need you're looking for is not in your cards. But this is a very extensive list of feelings. So you, I, now I think you <laughs> you're at the level where you should also use this and go through the, the, the list. And this is, I'm sorry, I forgot. I realized there's no title. This is the needs list. You can write needs list. And uh, you'll find that in here, you'll probably find your need. Okay, everybody figured out their feelings and needs? Great. And now we can do the energy shifting exercise, which is today again uh, mindfulness practice or meditation practice. Shilan <laughs> Ni <laughs> Trudinki <laughs> Gunlund <laughs> Mm Any <laughs>
છે I'm less in the volcano. Thank you. It's very useful. So, so the emotional, well, the, the daily practice, um, uh, you know, self-awareness, self-management, self-regulation, developing emotional intelligence, emotional literacy, developing regulation. We've seen this. We've worked a lot with that in the me domain. Uh, for the last two days, we've been starting to practice active listening, you know, grounded in, in empathy and just being present and paying attention to what are they feeling and what's their needs. Now, we're in the you domain when you do that because now I'm being able to pay attention to other. I'm using the same kind of emotional intelligence and literacy, but for the purpose of the people in front of me. And uh, starting on Monday, we're going to, so we're moving from here and we're, we're, we're going here. So, you know, although we, they're really separated, all these components, they're kind of interconnected. Today, I want to talk about conflict resolution with you. And then on Monday, we're going to do cooperative learning because uh, those are very important skills. Um, yesterday, there were some really good examples of, you know, challenges in the schools about uh, students who disengage from their learning because the parents are far away or they're not maybe very present in these uh, students' lives. And it, this, for me, really shows how important the human connection is. So it's even more important for these students. You can't take it for granted that you're going to demand and ask things for them and it's going to work because they're lacking probably the most important thing in their lives, which is the human connection and the safety of parents. And they don't have it. It's in the States, it's far away. Uh, it's the same thing in Ladakh. A lot of children have their parents far, far away. Although they see the parents more regularly. If, if a, I don't know, I was trying to put myself in the shoe of that you know, student whose parents is, is, not, is not in India. And I mean, I'm devastated when I'm trying to <laughs> imagine that because this is so frightening. So this is, I think, very specific to your communities also. And, it's a particular challenge that, and you need to address it. And I think maybe one solution would be to find a system of mentor, um, mentorship, you know, big brothers and sisters. Um, so someone in the school, what, what we do in our schools when we have serious behavior issue or a child that is about to fail or disconnect and very, it's very much disengaged, we actually strive to find one teacher in the school, maybe it's not, the, the, this teacher is not teaching that student right now, but we know that teacher really gets it with that kid and they have a good connection. So we encourage that teacher to keep an eye and also the, the student to go see that person when things go wrong. So that, that teacher becomes not, not a parent or a best friend, but they become a loving, compassionate and kind presence in that student's life. So I think that could be one answer, but you need to think in terms of relationships and how we reconnect with them. So then they reconnect because if, if I'm that student, let's say I'm in grade 10 and that can show all kinds of behaviors and I don't give a, you know, I don't give a damn. I don't care. I don't want to do my exam. I'm not going to turn up tomorrow. Now you put your cell glasses. What's, what's the challenge? Where is that student on this graph? What's, what do we need to work with that student? Is it the us domain? Is it the you? Is it the me? Where do we start? What do you think? Um, us domain. Well, yeah. yeah the first, I think. Uh, since we are dealing with the um, student's emotion and I'm expecting that students to respond to the, what, the things which I had told him. So it includes both me and you, so it's us. Yeah. Well, if you see it from a community perspective, totally. But that, that part of that student that says, I don't care, what do you need to practice? What do you need to reinforce? Yeah, yeah, now, yes, exactly. Self-awareness and self-management. And in self-awareness, you know what? I have a 
again, a document I forgot on my table in Montreal <laughs> that really um, explains each component. And I'm going to have it photocopied for you on Monday. There's one thing in the self-awareness that says positive outlook. But also that means how I see myself. Do I see myself in a positive way or do I see myself in a negative way? I don't care because nobody cares and who cares? No, that's not a positive outlook. That's an <laughs> we call it the glass half empty instead of half full. And, and these uh, students are at risk and it starts early. We see it early. I see it in kindergarten. I don't want to do this. I don't want to go and play. I mean, kindergartners, come on. Five-year-old doesn't want to go and play. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this positive outlook also is connected to academic success very much. So a disengaged student, and this is why I like it when we, ju we drop our judgment, lazy, uh, uh, doesn't care, whatever. Uh, doesn't care is not a label, but if you try to go see deeper, like why does he get disengaged? And how do I re-engage? Because I'm the teacher. And yes, through self-awareness, positive outlook. So the first thing I would do would look for positive experiences right here in our school and work with this. And if I'm the mentor, every day I would go see that kid and say, hey, name me two or three things that were fun today. What was great about your day today? Not what went wrong again, and <laughs> so you, and it's not easy. You have to dig for it. You have to look for that kid's interest. You have to reinforce. You've got to look for the positive, and then build a healthy relationship, and then show that student that they have the potential and they have to reconnect to that. And now the motivation will come from here. Okay, but it's you know it's it's a lot of work, but that's I think how one way we could help these uh, these students. So that, that was something that I thought about at 2 o'clock when I woke up this morning. <laughs> There's a very good question, and it's a, it's a huge challenge, I think, for your schools. Um, so we're, we're going to work into the you and the us domain more and more, but we're always using our feelings and needs and this kind of literacy because it holds the three domains. And yesterday I love what came up with this thingy and then on the way out Vishnu says why don't we add a T because it makes rest and I'm like yeah you know bad behavior give it a rest I think that's really fun and that means regulate empathize strategize we're missing T so today your job would be to think about what can we put for the T what, what would make sense so we're not going to do that now but think about it let's try to figure this out because I think this could be really uh, useful. I mean, I'm going to use it from now on. Rest for me, I remember. Regulate, empathize, strategize. And it's not regulate, strategize. Because this is what we do. And even I, I do that at school. When I'm busy, when I'm stressed, I'm going to tend to go, OK, calm down, and you do this. We forgot the whole middle, which is full of answers, and gives us a proper way to strategize. So these three steps are key to managing uh, behaviors and also to managing ourselves, I think. So anyway, so that, that was really fun. So let's keep this. And last thing I wanted to tell you, hmm. um, so this offering empathy, when we talk about empathy, and is it a Z or an S? Empathize. Hmm? It's S, huh? Yeah, because I'm thinking sometimes in French. Okay, I'll correct it after. So it can be both, huh? A British and American. Oh, okay. So offering empathy, or I call it compassion also, because this is, for me, it's a very uh, active, compassionate practice, is being present, being in the present of what's going on in front of me and trying to understand the feelings and needs. Not fixing, not finding the root too much. It's just offering a safe space so these things come up and we, we name them. So as a teacher or as a mediator, when I mediate, I'm tracking, we call this tracking. I'm tracking the feelings and needs. But I'm not thinking about, oh my goodness, uh, they're doing it because uh, then you're going to get lost. <laughs> and and it, there's no point in doing this right now. You're tracking feelings and needs. You're kind of a detective. And you can tell them out loud, wow, I hear you're feeling really tired and you need rest. 
or not, I know that you're feeling tired and you need, so you should, that I'm doing the you thing again, doing it for, for, for kids. So it's just, I hear, am I right? Or did I hear wrong? And then the person can correct. No, I'm not tired, I'm, I'm exhausted. <laughs> and I need a vacation, oh, okay. <laughs> That's, that's rest also. Vacation is the strategy, but behind this, the core need is rest, okay. So you're tracking these things, okay? Um, after the break, we're gonna do a practice in mediation. So yesterday you, you did one-on-one. -on -one. Today you're gonna do one, and then two people having a fight. It's like a next level. It's a bit like, yeah, I call it the black belt. <laughs> black belt in emotional literacy. But before we get there, uh, what I want to do this morning is we're going to do together the first lesson in, in the CS3 curriculum. This is our curriculum. Sorry, I'm going to use your table here. And the first lesson is called uh, a needs agreement. It's different than all the lesson in here. It's a foundational lesson. And what we do with agreeing on our needs is actually figuring out as a big group how to remain safe in our school and what makes us safe. Uh, we do it at the class level, but you know, as a school system, we, this should be understood that we function with needs which are core human values rather than just um, some rules like that have don't in front of them, all of them. Don't do this, don't do that, da, 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 da. those are those are different rules. This is a human core value agreement. And what's really important about this lesson is we, for the first time with the students, we talk about safety, the safety, the need for safety, and what types of safety there are in life. And to make it simple, we talk about two kinds of safety, emotional and physical, simple. So the way we do this, and I'm going to do it exactly like I do with, with my classes, we start this lesson in grade two. Grade ones, it depends how old are your grade ones. In Ladakh, I know they're slightly older, so they, yeah, some grade ones, they're like more seven, uh, but at six, they're a bit young. At six, we talk, about, we make it much more uh, short, and we, the teacher kind of brings out the main needs to feel safe and explains emotional safety and physical safety. But I'm going to do it the way I do it, starting grade two and up. Mm -hmm. So we, we take a, um, a poster. I don't want to make the board fall down, so I'm very cautious. <laughs> So I have a poster in front of the class, not too big, and, I, and I'm going to divide it in three parts. The first one goes, I'm phys physically unsafe when dot, 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 I am emotionally unsafe when, and I would need, and here in the middle, our needs to feel and be safe at school. So the, we're going to make two lists, one starting here, and it goes like this. So, okay, who can name me a situation when you're not feeling physically safe? Name a situation that happens at school. Can you name one? Hmm? Yes, hit. So now, well, just hit. Who wants to be the secretary and write down for me? Anybody can write this down for me while I ask the questions? Or actually, no. Uh, who can help me? I need one volunteer. Want to help? Yeah, come up. So you're going to ask the questions, and I'm going to write them down, since your ears are probably better than mine. <laughs> so we're gathering examples when we're not feeling physically safe. Yeah. And I'm going to write down. So go around and, and collect the examples. Not physically safe. So we said hitting. What else? 
makes us unsafe physically. Uh, we're talking about school. School, school. Yeah, school settings. Is it right now in your communities, does that work? Is there a war in India? But yes, if we were talking about Syria, for example, but it, it would be deeper than that. Hmm? Yeah, fighting. Just to finish the, the war question, if we were in a war zone, it would also affect deeply our emotions. And, but that's like an extreme level. We're just sticking to our schools here. So biting? Yeah. Ooh, that's a good one. Not getting the lunch because... Isn't it a physiological... Okay, so is that physical or emotional? Yes, so I'll have to write it uh, in both. Yeah. What else? We can do also emotional when I'm not feeling emotionally safe. Let's do both at the same time. Which one? Oh, getting threat from uh, other students. So is that physical or emotional? emotional. Yeah, it can be both. Physically uh, unsafe. Physically unsafe. Harassment. Anyone? Uh, harassment. Huh? Harassment. Harassment. Sexually abusing. Oh, sexual abuse. Physical or emotional? Okay, uh, physical and sexual abuse, I, there's a special place for it. Uh, I'm putting it up here. Uh, so for small children, when we get onto this topic, of course in grade two, three, four, five, you can't really say sexual harassment, but what I do is I call this my personal and private space under my clothes. That belongs to me. Nobody, 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 but nobody is allowed to do something that makes me feel uncomfortable and I don't want to do. So we, we go like this for smaller kids. And in your needs section, the poster does it really well. There's the need for the bubble. Uh, the, uh, like physical se sexual harassment goes further than that, but it's like going into my personal bubble, which belongs to me and the one under my clothes for small kids. Older kids will understand. But this one is like, that's a red light. And what we explain the students, well, no, I'll do it after. Let's collect the examples. Well, we can do both. Give examples and we'll sort them out. Just repeat because I didn't hear everything. Ah, because when they have an accident, Yeah. Uh, but is that because the teacher says no, or it's because the, t the student doesn't want to tell, he wants to go? Hmm. Uh, hmm? It could be many reasons. But this one is more like the child will go through very difficult emotion, like embarrassment. And, but I don't know if it's a, it's a, for me, it's not a case of safety, maybe. but. It, it doesn't depend on other people's action. It's more a personal one. But let's say, where, where could we put it? This is the first one time this one comes up. Where, where, can, where could we put this? Is that emotional or physical? Okay. But no, but this is interesting because this happens in the schools. about you need to give me examples now pretend you're students yes. yeah so yes uh, because uh, yeah yeah but yeah you gotta give me a fact like yeah i'm not unsafe because i have my period but if somebody looks through my bag and sees my lady things or so like going through a girl's 
bag? Wait a Invasion of privacy. Invasion of privacy. So this for older students, would that work? Like for boys and girls. This is a very private thing. So is that physical or emotional? I think it's both. I'm going to put it up here. So you see, so this very good example, I'm, I'm going to make a broader category because it's a bit tricky, but I'm making it a bit wider because, again, it's the need for safety. Getting hit? Uh, getting late? How is that a, a, a safety issue? Explain. So, for me, this for me this one is more about respecting the rules. You know, like the ground rules of the school, like you should be on time for your class. I think all schools go like this. It's less about safety, uh, but it's more about the code of conduct. Here, we really want to find. We want your students to name the examples that happen in the school. So getting late, yes, that might trigger some very strong emotion, but this relates to the code of conduct. But like uh, fighting, hitting, biting, uh, kicking, small kids have tons of examples they're going to give you. Uh, what else? Do you, can you think about some more? Oh, being, uh, being partial. Is that physical or emotional? Yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. Okay. Anything else? Uh, again, this is a bit like the code of conduct. This does not relate to the, uh, the, the safety. Yes, it does, but not for this needs agreement in the class. It will bring strong emotions, but if you're sick, it's nobody's re fault, really. You, you just got sick, and, and that's terrible. But this is not caused by someone else uh, ignorance. Hmm. ignorance of what when you ignore other friends when you just hmm? ignorance of what friend ignores other friend Hmm? Yes, okay, now we got the word for that figure, well, that <laughs> encompasses it all. Exclusion, is that physical or emotional? Emotional. emotional. And you know, remember what I said, yes, uh, I think yesterday or the day before, social exclusion hurts the brain the same way physical injury does, super important. So exclusion. It's all types of exclusion. You, it, so now we got this category. Included? Yeah. It's more emotional unless somebody hits him out of the, out of the gang or pushes him out or her. Yeah. Hmm. That's a good one. Well, it's it's out the physical. We keep it for real, actual, like you know, like uh, hitting the body. So because we want to, we want to also keep it simple for the the students and to we want them to really know the situation where they need to get a help because this is what this is leading us to. These are all red light situation where I need to go get an adult and get help. Uh, okay, so punishment from the teachers? Corporal punishment, is that physical or emotional? It's both, okay. Where do we put it? This is something that does not exist in my schools. Where would you like to put it? Does that go in the middle or on each column? 
in each. Okay. Because yes, if, if there's corporal punishment, it will affect also the emotional side. We, we will talk about discipline. I would like to talk about this on Monday. We're going to have uh, really a big brainstorming session on this. Anything else? Yes, bad mouthing. Physical or emotional? Yeah. That's great. Any more examples? You know, yeah, I said yesterday that the girls are super good at bullying. <laughs> so can you name a few of those things? Bad mouthing could be one of them. <laughs> huh? Torture? Like what? So, hmm? oh, so, uh, f like, nagging? Nagging, okay, so, Oh. You write that down. Is that physical or emotional? <laughs> it's both? Yeah, it's both. Okay. I think so. Yeah. See? Mocking? Yes, that's a great one. Mocking. Physical or emotional? Yeah, em emotional. So you see, as we're going through this list, also these are types of behavior you gotta pick up in your classes. You know, when you see someone mocking, it's just not. I want to teach my math or my my science, and I I see they're mocking each other. But this is something you have to pay attention to. Anything else? Getting called from the teacher. Oh, scolding from the teacher. Scolding when it's not done in the cell model or with loving kindness, that can affect you physically and emotionally, right? So scolding, some forms of scolding. Now, also be careful. I'm not saying that with this, we're, we're going to drop all forms of discipline, okay? We, there's something that supports discipline after this, but uh, yes, so a severe scolding, that is not, that is partial, that can affect. Yes, lunch stealing. Was that physical or emotional? Exactly, so, where, yeah, I'm gonna write it down. Lunch stealing is a problem. Huge. Okay, we're missing a few good ones here. Okay, you want a good one? Hmm? Criticism, oh yes, to criticize. Or put downs, you know? Ha, you're not good. Hmm? Humiliation? Okay, so that's all emotional. And uh, I'm also, we're talking from the point of view of students because the students will name what they go through with each other and sometimes with the teachers. So, humiliation, put downs, there, what else? We forgot one, there was another one. Criticism. Hmm? Yeah, come on, the girl corner. Hmm? Oh, blackmailing, is that physical or emotional? Yeah, it could be both because it's like if you don't uh, give me your lunch, I'm going to tell the teacher you cheated. And so that's, there's an element or I'm going to beat you up after school. So blackmailing, I think I'm going to put it in the middle because in the middle also we're, we're going towards the bullying incidents because those are different. They're, they're different kind of conflicts. Actually, they're not even conflicts. They're, we call them power over dynamics. Okay, so just to name a few more. Hmm? 
Oh, but that's if it's in your school code of conduct, and I'm in my school, there are suspension. If you get it, and the teacher was not partial, maybe you'll feel something here. But if you deserve your suspension, <laughs> you might just have to be suspended. Okay, so hmm? <coughs> leg. What is that? Yes, humiliation, we've got it. Oh, insult. Yes, 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 yes. It's funny, do you see my list how it's going right now? Physical is a little shorter and then I have a lot of emotional stuff going on. Actually, I'm running out of space. What did we say? Insult. Insult, name calling also. Hmm? Anything else? I got a good one. Hmm? Oh, labels. Yes, that's a good one. <laughs> okay, wait, I have a good one. Do you know Tenzin Dolma? Well, she's in love with Tupten. <laughs> yeah. What did I just do? What did, what did I just do? Yes, rumor, starting a rumor. That drives your whole class nuts. <laughs> Love, that doesn't go on. <laughs> Love is actually the most beautiful human thing we could have. But when the poor strategy is to, to get there, then we're in trouble. Like there, if you don't go out with me, I'm gonna tell so and so that you took her lunch. Or, you know, if I force someone to have a relationship, and, and now that's a misplaced kind of love. <laughs> and that's pretty much blackmailing. And so you see, we also are going in, in relationships by doing this on the healthy types of relationship, unhealthy. So, is this fun? The emotional side is really long. This is stuff that happens in your school all the time. This is what students have to deal with daily. So, we need to pay attention. We, we can't control. I'm not saying we have to control and stop. That's impossible. These are all human things that happen. But we need to pay attention. And then, when these things happen, we redirect into a healthy relationship because now we're going to talk about what do we need to feel safe at school? What do we need? And what I would do with the class right now is I would make, like we did the other day outside, the giant sun of needs. And I would ask the kids to go around, figure out which needs are, are important for them to feel safe, write it on a, a little piece of paper or a sticky note, and come and stick it in the middle. So you're going to do that right now you're going to look at your list. I'm not going to get, or we could, I don't know if we have enough time to put these down. Or I think you, you should work with your list. It's going to be easier. This is more fun, but because we don't have much time. So look at your needs list. You could do it very simply with the poster. You could do it with your cards, although they're a bit simple with when it comes to the needs agreement with class, I really tend to go deeper in the needs. And for grade twos, we're not so good at reading and understanding so much vocabulary, I will pick the needs for them. But I will have at least 40, even for second graders. So go through the list and write down which needs are important for you to feel safe. And I don't know if I still have those small sticky notes, because then we could write them and you could come and stick it on your poster. Oh yeah, I've got some here, perfect. Sticky notes. So I'm gonna give you a sticky note. You're gonna write the needs that are important for you and you're gonna write your name because you're gonna sign this. This is an agreement we're all making together. Uh, it's not according to these. 
Now, what do you want to see in your class this year? What do you want to see in your class? What's important for you? For me, and y there could be more than one need. You can write a few, sorry, the paper is small or take many papers. For me, I want respect and play. I love playing. So I would write this down, okay? Uh, some needs will be deeper than others. Some will be more superficial, like playing, depending on the age of the children. But, you know, for me, respect and peace. I like it when there's peace in my class. Oh, and I like friendship, you know? I really want everybody to get along. So, no, you can write more than one. Write as many as you want that you think are important for your class. Because this is something you're doing with your group. You're doing this with your group. You, you need, no, it's always an I statement. I need. Well, I, but I need my group uh, to have respect for each other. But I, I would like it to, for you as a teacher to do it from an I statement point of view. I need respect in my class. And that means that when I see a behavior that doesn't match respect, I'm, I'm going to tell you about it. You know, if I see somebody taking someone's lunch, you're going to have a discussion with me. So. No, because you added you. You need respect. And when you see a disrespectful behavior, you're going to go and address it. But I don't want you to respect me. This is vague, and I don't know how to do that. So, you know, because they're always tied to circumstances, too. So when we say, I want you to be respectful, that's kind of a vague thing. But if you say, I want respect for my group, so that's different. <laughs> that's different. That's, again, a demand on, on, on someone else to meet my need for respect. When I want you to respect me, or I want you to earn my respect, I'm making you responsible for my need for respect. But as a teacher, when I need respect, that means that when I see somebody stealing someone's lunch, I'm gonna go talk to the two of you, and we're gonna fix this. And if I see somebody shouting at someone else, because respect is important for me, I'm gonna go and tell you, whoa, that behavior is not respectful. So this is, you see, it's like, changing a little bit how you approach the situation and you change a little bit your vocabulary so oh nice i signed your name everywhere <laughs> okay yeah any more questions so we're not th these this needs agreement really is laying the foundation for positive discipline now we're talking about corporal punishment and punitive discipline where I punish. Now we're slightly moving elsewhere because we're agreeing on what's going to be not the discipline but the agreement in our group. And what we're basing this on are our values. And as the teacher, I'm going to be the guardian of them and I'm going to call the shot when I don't see proper behavior that, you know, go against our values. This is not a fix-it thingy. It's not because we do a needs agreement and the kids know that this is our needs, you know, that it's going to stop all behaviors. Because the next day, they're going to do the same thing. <laughs> we do this beautiful need agreement. They go deep inside. They think. You go, wow, they're so wonderful. They know exactly what they need. And the next day, they go out in the schoolyard and somebody steals someone's lunch. You know, it's not going to stop anything. I call this an ongoing conversation ongoing conversation all the time but at least we've agreed on some stuff that are important for us which are our needs which unite us not only as a class but as human beings we want happiness and safety everybody's got their needs what <laughs> there's a funny one over there Uh, I need my students to study. So, okay. what you like? so what's the problem with that statement? <laughs> yes, okay. But you, you need your students to study. So that's a demand. That's not, would you be willing to study? And bear with me because that's annoying what I'm doing now. It's, yeah. we want a result. How are you going to change from you study 
to motivate them to do it. Hmm? Change the, in a little bit. Uh, we can add a word. Uh, I want to. I need to motivate my students to study, or we can. Or we can. I need to. Just well, what do you need? You need. Well, what do we need when we need our students to study and learn? But that's not a need then. You're into a strategy and a result. I mean, after all the effort, then the activity will be there. Hmm. But the result is not the need. So what's the need? When, when we're, when, as teacher, we want them to study. Study hard because we need... Hmm? Okay, we're getting closer. A meaningful life, achieving... Hmm? And, well, we need to understand others while we're doing this. What else? Oh, encouragement. That would help also for this. Uh, but we, we need, actually, you know what? As a teacher, I could say, I need, I need my students to succeed. I need them to succeed, not to give me what I want, which is, of course, study and good result. We all want this. But if you connect to, I want them to succeed, now your intention might be also a bit more motivating for them rather than mm, 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 mm. we had a good situation yesterday a real one who was with uh Gishela yesterday yeah did that work yeah so we we had the same kind of problem about you know how do we motivate the students to do the hard work which is not fun but at the same time listen to their needs and say look okay i hear you need to play but at the same time, as a teacher, you know, and I work really hard to make sure you succeed, I need to see that you get involved and you study. So how can we meet everybody's needs? And then you can find solution, but ultimately as a teacher, you're the one who has the discipline and, and puts boundaries, because it's not play all the time. But to validate what's going on and find solution, that helps. So... You see, I don't have a ready-made solution. This is all something that you learn as you go and you practice, and then you get to hear the needs, and you go, okay, they have this need, but my need is also... So th this is the thing about needs. My need and your need are as important. Although when I'm a, stu I'm, I'm a, I'm a teacher, I'm the adult, I'm the one in charge. <laughs> That's not going to change. So I still am in charge of putting boundaries and making things clear. But how do I give them a little bit of you know, meeting their needs while they understand my needs and the reason why I'm doing this. And now we find solution together is much more effective than forcing. But it's a lot of work from us, right? Because now I'm always trying to engage in, in this kind of conversation. So it's more work from us, but in the long run, I think it's more, it's, it pays off more. Because we keep the connection. Remember the, this first mantra I said? Connect before correct. It's always con connect, connect, connect. Why are they not engaging? So I want to know. I'm going to go get the needs, and then I'm going to make sure they hear my needs as a teacher also, because that's important. So connect before correct. OK, everybody's got their needs. So what we do at this stage is I would ask students, there are many ways to finish this activity, which is fun. Um, you could have students come one by one. And, and tell the class their needs in front of everyone. So there's some, okay, who wants to come up first? Who wants to come up and tell us our, their needs? Hmm? Come over here. And you know, for your group, this is a fantastic, this is lesson one I do. When I walk into the school, our school year begins late August, this is lesson number one. And also it helps the group know each other. So. Uh, actually, I'm feeling a bit nervous right now because all my needs are kind of like demand. <laughs> so you guys can collect my needs. Oh, yeah, good. So well, I you need... Them from the list, they're not demand. It's no, I you... just uh, come up with my mind. Okay. Maybe it's there. I need my students to be sincere. So you need... Uh, Sincerity okay. should be there. So forget all the, I need my student, but say, I need honesty and sincerity. Actually, this is a need for integrity. 
which is a beautiful one. Being myself and being honest. Mm. So you need integrity. That's and a wonderful one. As well as... Well, you, you don't say from the students. Now you're just saying, I need this in life. Yeah. That means I will want this in my relationship with you guys too. So, but if I say, I need you, blah, 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 we, we're not, we don't need that now. Yeah, you know, we're like, I need integrity. For me, it's important in my life. I need honesty. So when I see behaviors that I find dishonest for sure, at some point I'm going to go talk to you. So we're just making statements about what's important for us. Yeah. Second thing is uh, punctual. I'll be on time and you should be on time. Okay. So that's <laughs> respect. Respect for the ground rules here in the class. And some of them are being on time. Yeah. So this is a need of respect for me. Yeah, that's all. That's it. So then you go stick it in the middle. Okay, who wants to come up next? That's really good. Thank you. Who wants to come up next? Uh, I also have got the same word, sincerity. Mm, but wonderful. Uh, I would like to share something. So in most of the school right now, we are beginning of the session. So yes. um, suppose if I'm the class teacher of a particular class, and just to make uh, rules and regulations by the teacher, first of all, we have got this type of activity. How should our uh, class be for the whole year to have a better learning? Mm. So then maybe the different students, maybe they are not rich in such vocabularies, but still then they have got their ideas. If suppose this that we have to do good. So the teacher may say good in what sense? Should we go do good in the discipline or punctuality or study or whatever it may be? Then we may come with some words and the, in, through this activity we they may learn some other new words also. So I think it's a very good thing to, you know, very useful in the beginning. So if we have a common agreement, yeah. then it would be much better for us to say, oh, this is our agreement, now we have to follow it. And this is a, something that we have met. I have not imposed it, the teachers say. Maybe, I don't know. And you Yes, be. and you've involved your students in it, so they're yeah. kind of stuck. <laughs> yeah. You we didn't are, tell them that, but they, they're kind of, oh my goodness, yes, I took part so in this. So we include everybody. Yeah. It's inclusion. And if some st student says, oh, I'm not agree with this such and such, you know, code of conduct or whatever it may be needs, then maybe uh, we can have some, you know, open discussion. And then finally that student may, you know, says that, okay, now I, I agree. So agreement and dis agreement in disagreement, yes. first of all. Yes. So I would like to stick Absolutely, and, and it's easier to agree on needs than rules that start by don't. And if I were to look in your school's codes of conduct, probably they all start by don't uh, come to school without a uniform, don't smoke, don't, 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 don't. And what we do actually, what this needs agreement, I, I work with schools to rewrite the code of conduct. And we base it on the same principles of values. And then we turn the don'ts into positive behavior. We you know, do, do come to school with proper uh, you know, uniform, clean uniform. Uh, so anyway, but this is, so thank you so much for this comment. This is exactly. Uh, sometimes in this way, going. we can find out the, the problems in the students also. For example, if the students are always getting late. So through this, maybe we can find the reason why they are getting late. So we make find the reasons for that. Absolutely. And then agree on what to do to correct the behavior. So connect before correct. Okay. Anybody else wants to come? Oh. Yes, please explain. Non-artificial <laughs> truth. Oh, integrity also. Integrity. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> oh, authenticity, it's in here. Karjin Lana, Tandangi, Tro Muni Jude, Muni. Mamazina, the Tanda Ginkuchi, the Jimami Biran Silendi. Mabu Junjo in Bicabla, when the Inquiry, the Kana Kansu Raku. Jimmy 
但是你们不能让我去用的话 但我自己,这种困难,这样的人,这样的人,这样的人,这样的人,这样的人,这样的人,这样的人,这样的人,这样的人,这样的人,这样的人,这样的人,这样的人,这样的人,这样的人,这样的人,这样的人,这样的人,
Ninja the Muni in Gue, the Kishim, but Pijas and the Kabilanga Sui Nalola, meet it as Narbuchi Gue, Nikop in the younger, Chilu Kitchen Machina, Gargilan, Narbuchi, the Susanju Chela, Pento Yur. That's on Monijina, Narbuchi, the Narbuchi, Pijas and Pinto Chusina, on the Sumji Titans and Sumji Titan, the Cambuji Jacob. That day on Muni Suraj, Cambu Muniji, and a parcel of the Muniji to Pento Chi, they are Chimandu. Need the Yokojanza go shoe me. So whatever feeling we should have, for example, the 10th March, uh, you know, uprising is coming up. And we have to, in such cases, we have to show the, the genuine feeling to the world or to, to outside. And he says that whether it's good or bad, him, he's not talking about that, but it should be genuine feeling. And it's a much better. Well, it's part of developing this emotional uh, intelligence, awareness, and literacy. And and for me, children are very authentic. And the younger they are, the more authentic they are. And then they lose it in our schools because we don't pay attention to this. Yeah, yeah. And they... But, yeah, but we lose it. And authenticity also will be maintained if we, and this is a lesson for all of us, the adults, listen with authenticity to children and we don't often do that because we think we're older we're better we're more mature and we're in charge yeah. so in this sense we were all the models of this yeah yeah so yeah so it's it's break time so on this note a very wise note uh, as you go out please go and stick your needs to feel safe this year at school uh, on the board and we'll see you at 12. Child's play. And yeah? That's wonderful. I'm looking at all the needs on the board. So once again, if, if you find yourself in a, in a puddle and you go, ah, my need is more a demand, you know, I need uh, everybody to respect me, Take all the beginning of the sentence and just focus on respect. And then slowly you'll understand what that means by not wanting this need to be met by from others, but doing it yourself. So the need for respect. I don't, should we wait? Is everybody here or? Yeah, we can start. Okay, uh, <clears throat> so this next part now is, uh, I wanted to talk to you about conflict resolution. Uh, I think, I know, I know it's holy and people are <laughs> eager to go out and, 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 and go and play and do something else, but um, I think this is important. We, we really have the luxury of time this week. I never ever have this luxury in the West. When people ask me to come and, and talk to the teachers at school, they're like, oh, can you train my teachers in one hour? Uh, I'll give you half an hour, two, and as I've got little time. With you, it's really wonderful because I can go much further and you've been doing tons of practice, uh, really. And I know it might be frustrating and this is a new thing. No, it's okay. But please bear with me. Uh, I think conflict resolution is so important in our school, so I really want to take a bit of time on this. And yesterday we spoke about like bullying incidents and, and as a teacher, what do I do? And I said, you can't do anything if you're alone. Yes, you can do, uh, we call it, in French again, oh sorry, arrêt d'agir, how can I translate that? Arrêt d'agir means I'm stopping the situation right now. So I see some incident and I know it's bullying and I'm gonna stop it. You go here, you, principal's office, that's a arrêt d'agir, stop. And then after that we have to do an intervention. So bullying is not your normal conflict. This is not something normal and this is not something that should be tolerated or accepted super hard to catch one person as uh, one teacher cannot fix can stop something but we can fix only as a community in the us domain so we need a plan there needs to be a plan of intervention and the plan starts from the principal level and then under that maybe a team so in Ladakh we have a cell team uh, and and we there's it's a it's like four teachers 
who are interested in cell and they read about it and they inform other teachers about it, but also if the students don't feel well, if somebody is not safe, they know that they're the first resource person. Yes, the, the homeroom teacher, my teacher I can talk, but also we have some teachers on the cell team that the students can go and see. And then the cell team has to become a detective team because we can just stop anything we don't know about. We need to investigate what's going on, get the facts from all the students involved. And the students also know that this is how our school does things. And so when somebody's not safe, there's going to be an investigation. It's not about, I'm going to get you and punish new, or you might be expelled. We're not there. We're like, whoop, stop everything, investigate, get the facts. And, and it's tedious work because sometimes it's been going on and it's like this. We call this intractable. We don't know where the conflict started. We don't know where it went. We just know it did a big thing. Each situation is different, so we need to investigate. And at the same time, also always think about confidentiality. There's a student that must be frightening. It's very frightened in there. This has happened to me. I'm being bullied. I go tell the teacher and the teacher tells the class, Hey, everybody, you've been mean to Sophie. Stop it right now. I mean, how do you think Sophie feels right now? I just want to disappear and never come back to the school. Okay, this happened to my daughter in, in uh, grade 10. She was mortified. And, and this is actually very damaging. So students have to know that when this happens, we're going to keep confidentiality. We're going to protect the victim of the receiver, but we're also going to go and help the bully or the actor. I'd rather use actor and receiver. And the reason is, even when it comes to bullying, we see this as a teaching opportunity. The actor, we can all be actors in our lives. And we, we've all been actors at some point. And I'll explain why. Bullying is a form of power over. I didn't write it, but see, if I have a conflict, it's on the same level. I'm going to argue with you, okay? So, yeah, you really annoy me and you're not my friend anymore. Then you can argue back with me. We're in jackal mode. Okay. Even I don't like you from the very beginning. <laughs> yeah, well, what do you think? <laughs> me too, same here. So you go your way and I'll you piss off. Go. <laughs> okay, fine. Yeah, and don't you come and talk to my friends. So what's happening here is there's a conflict, it's escalating, but we're pretty much, we're at the same level. I'm, we're, we're like play, playing a bad tennis game of jackal. <laughs> okay, but now look at this. If I'm in a conflict where there's power over, I'm going to put the person down and I'm going to get bigger and stronger and I'm going to at some point enjoy some of this. Well, you're not my friend anymore. If I see you around, I'm going to make your life so miserable. You're going to regret even like, saying my name. So how do you feel when I say that? You want, okay, but you're supposed to be scared. <laughs> no, no, but uh, pretend you're scared of me. So, but you know, like the way I spoke to you, but did you feel that I'm trying to, and you, I know you, you're going to, and you're going to do the same with me, but let's say that you're not wanting to be, tall again and I'm putting you down and down and down and now we have a bullying situation, a power over conflict and those are dangerous and they're unacceptable and they have to be stopped. So when, when the person springs up and we're fighting at equal level, that's just a conflict. But this kind of thing, that's dangerous, that's bullying. So, so that's my explanation of this is what you have to keep an eye on. And it's quite easy in the classes and it's great fun. <laughs> but I ask, like, if I ask you, this is what I do in my class, have you ever been in a situation where you felt you were becoming small? I've been in a situation when people spoke to me and I felt I was getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Did that happen to you ever? Raise your hand if you've ever had this happen. Yeah. Yeah. Now, raise your hand if you've been in a position where you made someone feel small and you kind of like... <laughs> We, we've all been there, and I wouldn't call it bullying, but we've all been there, okay? So this is why, yeah, at the student's level, this is a teaching opportunity. 
we need to turn those things around and teach the actor and the receiver and protect the receiver, but teach the actor. And it doesn't stop there. Because all the kids that witnessed this power over struggle, well, they're actually the most important people because they're the ones who can make a, a situation go worse or they can make it stop. All the kids who are like, oh yeah, look, they're fighting again. That makes it worse. And the bully knows and they're using this kind of energy to continue. But the study shows, and not just one, but we know that when there's a power over struggle or bullying incident and one witness, so actor, receiver, witness, these are the three key players in there. One witness says, hey guys, stop, that's not cool. In, third, in like three seconds, the bullying incident will stop and something will change. So the focus of the education has to be on who you think. It's on the witnesses. So we need to teach all the students about this. And we call them positive witness, negative witness. So when you're, and, and the students have to realize which role they played. We call them, we call this the geographical map of a conflict. And, and there's a lesson in, in uh, the curriculum exactly explaining this. If there's awareness, there will be action. But if we are not aware of how this plays out and what that looks like and what kind of a map we're on, it's very hard to intervene. But when I go into my class and I know there's been trouble, my fifth graders have been driving me crazy for the last three years. There's been a lot of stuff happening. And we do the map and everybody, everybody knows where they are on the map. And now we're finding solution. Yeah, I was a negative witness. What can you do about it? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say no next time. Uh, I'm going to get some help. I'm, I'm too worried. I'm too shy. I'm going to go talk to an adult. But knowing that this will be confidential, the teacher is not going to come back saying, hey, Sophie told me that you were mean again. No, don't do that. Nobody will ever speak to you again <laughs> in your school. OK? So you have to educate. And people and the students need to know where, what role they're playing, and then they will be able to intervene and act on this. But if they don't know, and if you don't know, it's going to be very hard. So this was just a distinction between conflict and power over uh, struggle, which leads to bullying. So what I, want, what I would like to do with you now for the rest of the period is you're going to become mediators. So the mediator is the person that helps two people find solution. And I'm saying find solution because some mediators fix for them. <laughs> you're not going to fix anything for anyone. So you're going to be a nonviolent communication NVC mediator. This is how I was trained. So I was trained to offer a safe space. And by the way, we don't put people in a bullying incident in mediation. Actually. Actors and receivers should not be put together at the beginning because there's too much fear and safety issues. Now we're going to role play some moderate conflict. Easy stuff. No bullying, no power over struggle. So the mediator offers a safe space for everybody to tell their feelings and needs, tell their feelings and needs, then you gently guide everybody towards the fact that they have very important needs and how can they find solution around the needs and can they make a request to each other. If you're role playing very small children, sometimes I'm the one offering possibilities of solution. And, and we have something for the small kids, which is great if you're interested, if you teach lower classes like kindergarten, it's called the wheel of choice. So, and you know, we do a bit like, the, it's kind of the needs agreement, but in kindergarten, the wheel of choice is we ask the kids, you know, when things go wrong, what do we need and, and what, what, would we, what should we choose to figure out how to sort a fight? And in kindergarten, it's always the case. Well, we need to share, um, take your turn, don't push. Or would you be willing to take your, actually it's a request. The wheel of choice is actually a request. Uh, would you be willing to share, take your turn, uh, play with someone else? So the kids come up with their own requests in the wheel of choice. And then when they have a fight, first thing they do is they give it a rest. And they're going to go and regulate. They're going to empathize 
for themselves and trying to see also the other feelings and needs. And then they're going to strategize with the wheel of choice. So today you're giving it a rest. So in teams of three, name yourselves A, B, and C. Actually, can I have two people up here? We're going to, I'm going to demonstrate. Who wants to come up here? I can wait a very long time, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I need someone else. Do you want to come? Okay, so you two, I'm A, I'm A, you're B, and you're C. Because A will be the first mediator, you start with A. So you two figure out a little conflict, you have 10 seconds, something very easy. Okay, so I'm the mediator, and we'll do like we did yesterday, because I think it's useful. You're going to have a, a sheet of paper with one column, feeling, one needs. And what's the conflict about? So I'm the teacher and they come up to me. What's happening? Uh, she, she speaks about, she speaks bad things about me uh, behind, when I'm not there. Okay. Can, okay, and remember observation? She says bad things about me, so I'm, like, I'm going to go, what did she say? Can you say the thing she said? She told that I eat lots of food and even take the food to room. Oh, she said you eat too much food? Yeah, too much food. I didn't say that. Oh, okay, so, <laughs> okay, uh, she says friend, you eat too much food and take it to your room. Yeah. She told it to my friend over there. Okay, and she friend. told friends. Yeah, so okay, good. Is that true? No, ma'am. Huh? Oh, we will go and ask him in hmm? person. No, no, no. Not true. It's not true. Really, ma'am? Ah. Really? Okay, but for, <laughs> for the sake of making it easy, because if it's not true, then we're going to go into something else. I'm going to have to go deeper, and this is harder. Mm -hmm. But let's say it's true, because we want to make it easy. Yeah. You, you have an upfront situation. I mean, this is often the case, but that's a little bit more complicated, because then I would have to spend a bit of time with her, a bit of time with him to see what's really going on, and that's a bit more hard. So let's say it's true that you said that. Yeah, okay? it's true. It's true. Yeah, so, <laughs> so okay. First of all, I want to hear her feelings and needs and why she said it. And after that, we're going to listen to you, okay? So please, whoa, what's happened? Now, A, B and C will work with their, take the kiddie posters, the smaller one, the, I mean, the, for the small children. We're going to really go with easy situation. So how are you feeling? What happened when you said that? What were you feeling? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So, how are you feeling when you said that? Hmm. Yeah. You scared? Yeah. <laughs> you scared of him? Yeah. <laughs> now you're scared of him. But when you said that he, he eats too much food, what were you feeling at that time? I was feeling curious. Okay. You're curious. Yeah. And what did you need? You were curious and you needed what? I was curious and I want to hear from some, yeah, someone. So you just wanted to understand? Yeah, I want to understand. Uh, understand him? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, d did you hear how she was feeling? How was she feeling? Uh, she feel uh, insecure. Mm, no, because she didn't I'm say that. I'm eating I too much. Uh, you have to repeat what she said. Yeah. Now, because now I'm training the students to also do active listening. Mm. So, say your, f your feeling again. Feel Show him. I feel curious. And you need? I, and I want, I want to understand. Can you repeat how she's feeling? She's feeling curious. Yeah, and she needs and what? She needs to understand something. Okay, so she looks yeah. like she wanted to understand what was going on with you. Yeah. But when she said that to you, how did you feel? I feel uh, so angry, disappointed, and as well as uh, surprised also. Hmm. <laughs> because I'm not expecting her to tell such things. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so what did you need? So I need uh, truth. Hmm? I need truth. The truth? I, I, need, I need the justice. Yeah. Oh. Justice to be done. I need justice. Uh, I, so need I also need... Uh, <laughs> me. Not 
something else. I need justice, ma'am. Justice. Yeah. Now we're in trouble because if his understanding of justice is that I punish her, we're in trouble because that's not what I'm here for. So explain to me what justice means to you. I want you to... Uh, right. Is it justice or fairness? Fairness, yeah. Yeah, fairness. that's not fair um, that somebody yeah. tells you this, right? I'm, I'm trying to de-escalate de because I don't want, it's not an easy situation. So fairness, okay. And do you have something you would ask her? What would be your request for your need for fairness? Because I see you need fairness yeah, I, and you need it to understand. I request you not to speak such things. Hmm. With others. Yeah, yeah, with others. If you want to talk, then you have to face me directly. directly. Yeah. So would you be willing to not say these things and come and talk to me if you yeah. need to understand so something? All right, I can digest those things. Okay. Are you, are you willing to, to do that? Yeah, ma'am. Uh, and then I don't let this stop here. I said, do you have a request for him? Because at first it was kind of playful and maybe not very nice, but I didn't hear it was really mean. Maybe, maybe not, but do you have a request for him? I have a request for you. Like, uh, when he was, uh, yeah, <laughs> don't eat too much. <laughs> and why? Why not eat too much? Maybe Are you worried that he's going to get sick? Yeah, it may be uh, good for health. <laughs> ah, maybe so now actually she's more like a friend to him. Oh. oh. She, now I feel that she's have some concern about me. Yes, and how do you feel when you hear now her say that? I feel a little bit happy, uh, relieved. <laughs> relieved. And okay. satisfied also, ma'am. Okay, so y are you feeling more relieved? Are yeah. you less worried? Yeah. Okay. You, so yeah. you guys, you think you fixed this? this? Is this okay? Do you think you're friends again? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, not uh, only friend, ma'am. You're? Not only friend. What do you say? Not only friend. Not only friend, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. This is the. Uh, hmm? Maybe uh, she was like, uh, she was wearing some face. She's not telling truth. Oh. So now you worry that she's not saying the truth. Yeah. So if this happens with me, and this situation happens all the time, this for me is miscommunication. Yeah. Then I would spend more time with him because I think she's done her job as a friend, and she tried and she did all she had to do. Now, if he's still interpreting what she's saying, I'm going to have a talk with him, not her. Because she, you're asking her to meet your need because you're, you're still not sure and that belongs to you. Okay? So, that was kind of hard. <laughs> this is not, try to choose even easier than this. This was really good. Actually, this is very close to what I see all the time. But choose something simple uh, because uh, very basic stuff. Because th there were layers in your situation, which is great fun. But for practice uh, purpose, go easy. Okay? So off you go. We have uh, we the rest of the time to, to practice mediation. And oh yeah, so A does first mediation, then B, then C. That's why keep it short and very simple. Okay? And, and thank question? you for this role play. It was really good. Thank you. Can I ask one question? Yes. So right now you are um, training the trainers. Yes. Uh, but uh, should we create some sort of uh, you know situation in the class, or should we use this in the real life situations? In no, the class? I, I you know. Should we wait for the real life situations? Of course, such type of the situations are quite common in our classes, especially in the junior classes. Mm -hmm. Should we uh, take the opportunity in those cases, or uh, should we create some sort this sort of atmosphere artificially and then? So there's both. Okay. okay. So because we we teach children how to do conflict resolution by the rest technique, which I love. So, you know, we, we teach children that when there's a conflict, what we need to do, both of us, we can't sort it out in the volcano, calm alert, then everybody goes to the poster. We all have a peace corner, or now we call it the connect corner in a class with a poster. So there's the, the thermometer, the poster, and the wheel of choice or something else for older kids. So we tell the kids, go to the connect corner, regulate, 
empathize, everybody shows their feelings and needs, and see if you can come up with a request. So we're going to teach kids to do that themselves. But when they can't do it themselves, and it's too complicated, like this situation was a bit too much, I don't know how old you were in this role play, but then we would say, come and get me if you can't find a solution. And then we go through the process again together. Now, for the teachers, this is what you need to develop, is this active listening and being out of judgment and keeping in mind observation. You see, I went through the observation. At the beginning, we were more into the interpretation. And I mean, 100% of the time, you'll have an interpretation. If, especially if there's not 100%, but if there's high emotion, you're going to know she did and she's mean, and he did it. So you help achieve an observation. And if you can't come to consensus, like we started at the beginning, which would have been great fun, but a bit too long. Um, <laughs> no, that's not true. I didn't say that. So I would say something like, well, can we agree that you're really both upset with each other? Yes. OK, so I would probably try to find a common ground, which is not in the situation. But I agree, like there's something going on between the two. And then we would go into feelings and needs and then request. So as teachers, the, this idea of active listening with these four steps in mind to figure out conflict resolution is really important. But you know, mind you, it takes a lot of practice. And, and you go with baby steps at the beginning, because it will depend on your own emotional literacy that you have to develop. And, and it took me a while to develop mine. Really, when I say three years, I'm not joking. And, and the mediation part is like the most advanced level that, that you can achieve. So it, it, it's not realistic for you to say, like, you have to be good at this tomorrow. You have to take your time and go slow. Uh, but if you practice with yourself, you develop your own emotional literacy, you go fish with people slowly, this will become more normal and habitual. And then, then you'll see you'll be very skilled at using it in situation with two kids. OK? So. You can go outside, you can stay here. Uh, make sure you're in teams of three. And I'll go around in the groups. If there's any question, just you know, ask me and I'll, I'll come over. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, we talk about that. Okay. I'm gonna be there. Situation. Yeah. It's deep break, and I just so now. I'll go around and I'll come back. Okay. Now we talk about that. Now I'm going to talk about that. Ah, they can see that. That's all. Okay. So I'll go outside, and if you fix the problem, then please call me. I'll come back. Okay. ไม่เอาเลยชิดเกี่ยวกับเนี่ยเนี่ยเกลาชิดเกี่ยวกับเนี่ยเกลาชิดเกี่ยวกับเนี่ยเกลาชิดเกี่ยวกับเนี่ย